the Cuban Revolution proved to be a transformative time, not just for the political system in Cuba, but also for the arts. I talked about that and much more with Abigail McEwen. She's an assistant professor of Latin American art at the University of Maryland. Well, to kind of go back to the moment of the revolution, kind of in 1959, that was certainly kind of a, a day of reckoning for Cuba's pre-revolutionary kind of vanguardia. Artists kind of questioning themselves how to define in both form and content a revolutionary kind of art. Um, in 1961, Fidel Castro kind of gave a speech, his words to the intellectuals, and he said, within the revolution of everything, outside of it, kind of nothing. In practice, that meant that a number of artists embraced you know, figuration, um, photojournalism, kind of pop art, in the sense that we might be more familiar with, with artists like Andy Warhol, um, installation art, eventually performance art. Um, I would say, in some, in some ways, that trend kind of continued to the next kind of watershed moment of Cuban art kind of in the 1980s, kind of um, with the so-called kind of new generation, the volume uno, the first volume um, kind of generation of artists who emerged at that point. One of the best-known artists is Alberto Corda. He's a photographer, documented the social revolution. Explain his role. In a way, you know, Corda is um, kind of the artist behind the very famous, iconic um, portrait of Che Guevara, you know, as the romanticized revolutionary. Um, that sense of using kind of, photography to kind of, familiarize kind of, the party leadership to both the Cuban people and to an international audience um, certainly found kind of, great kind of, kind of, traction in kind of, building kind of, the narrative and kind of, the story of the revolution. Um, so many talented artists in Cuba, and they carry a lot of prestige in the country as well. Um, you told us earlier that artists in places like the U.S. view the country, view Cuba truly as a paradise. Explain to us what you mean by that. Boy, kind of as a kind of a paradise in a way that also seems kind of a kind of a romantic um, kind, of, kind of paradigm. The idea of going to this um, kind of communist kind of country. Um, for, for American artists um, has not been um, kind of so easy. Um, Cuban artists, I would say today, are trying to, in a way, kind of resist kind of that, that paradigm of Cuba as kind of the tropical kind of playground, um, um, critiquing, in a way, more openly now, I would say, in the last 10 years, um, kind of the government, kind of the isolation of Cuba kind of internationally, um, kind of the, the so-called imperialism, as they would say, of, of the states. So now with normalization of relations between uh, Havana and Washington, um, how will that change the arts between the two countries? What do you expect to see? You know, what I would love to see, uh, I don't know if I can expect to see this, I would love to see more open exchange between artists, certainly in the States and in Cuba. Um, since the revolution, there have been um, almost kind of, kind of a bifurcated history of Cuban art artists who stayed on the island and those within the diaspora. It would be fantastic to see kind of Cuban art in a very holistic sense um, be seen um, together, but also kind of more broadly in a kind of Atlantic context, in a hemispheric context, looking at the states, looking at, looking at other kind of islands, nations in the Caribbean, um, and to be seen as a kind of ongoing kind of dialogue, which means artists um, being able to travel freely kind of between all of these, these countries. Well,